past few years as they are now currently endangered. The peacock, or the Indian peafowl, uh, peafowl is the term for most genders. The female is called the peahen. It uh, roams most of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Iran, and a few other Middle Eastern countries. It uh, is, mo uh, is best known for its uh, eye-catching plumage, or its uh, tail feather display. And uh, that was uh, one reason it was hunted, and is now uh, uh, vulnerable to extinction. Yeah, it is used as a as a symbol in Persian culture as as a symbol of uh, beauty and peace. The snow leopard is a magnificent animal. It is a leopard with a much uh, lighter coat to blend in with its home, uh, snowy mountain. It used to live in the mountains north of Khorasan, but it is now extinct in Iran. And it can be found in uh, scarce numbers in the snowy mountains of Turkmenistan but it's still very hard to find because they're solitary, uh, they camouflage, and they are, uh, their population is very low. The short fin of Mako shark is a shark that uh, roams around the Persian Gulf as well as the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. It's the same shark used by the Japanese to create shark fin soup, which in the process they take the shark they cut off its uh, top uh, dorsal fin, and then they let the shark go, and uh, using the fin as the main uh, ingredient for the soup. But what the Japanese did not know is that the shark really uh, needs this uh, top fin to uh, survive, so their numbers have uh, gone down uh, dramatically off the coast of uh, Japan and China. They, uh, uh, um, even though they're slightly hunted in the Persian Gulf, their population is fine. They can live for about 25 years, and they are not known for attacking people. And finally... <laughs> the Persian donkey is it's a separate species of donkey. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's pretty small for a donkey. It, uh, uh, they roam the central plains of Iran. Uh, green grass is their favorite food. And uh, they are uh, domesticated and used for carrying light freight. Although this freight is too heavy for it. <laughs> and, uh, in, in a Persian uh, uh, culture and folklore, they are used as a face of a symbol of innocent ignorance or stupidity. <laughs> They're actually not stupid in real life. They're actually very intelligent, and uh, people use them as pathfinders in uh, in the mountains and hard to cross terrain. In conclusion, we need to better recognize the importance of of animals in our lives, and we need to protect their habitat and ours. And as Iranians, it's fitting that we lead the way. Attire, and the women had to wear 
hijab or manteau, and they had to wear long pants, a closed toed shoes, and a headscarf. And all their clothes had to be in dark colors. And here's a picture. The men had to wear long sleeves and long pants, and they also had to be in dark colors. And they weren't allowed to wear ties. Here's an example. The younger generation has changed the dress code to fit their modern styles and ideas, and they started wearing brighter clothes. So the women, they are very stylish and beautiful, and the partial head cover makes them even more beautiful and a little bit mysterious. At home, there was no restriction on what you can wear. So, as you can see. <laughs> While I was in Iran, I noticed that men and women in Iran, in public and at parties, are more fashionable than they are in America. And it is acceptable for the brides to dress non-traditional. So here you can see me. And a quote from my mom is that her Iranian women have always been and always will be strong-minded. Put them under extreme pressure, they shine stronger, more independent, and more determined to follow their own identity and goals. Post-revolution fashion is a small testimony of this fact. who was the official photographer of the Shah of Iran from 1896 to 1907. After a visit, visit to Paris in July 1900, Akash Bashi obtained a camera and filmed the Shah's private visit to Europe upon the Shah's order. He is said to have filmed the Shah's private and religious ceremonies, but none of the copies exist today. Sound is born. In 1932, Abdul Hussein Sepantab made the first Iranian sound film. His films include War Girl, Fair to See, Shireen and Farhad, Black Eyes, Leili and Majnu. The New Iranian Cinema. Uh, these films had poetic language, political tones, and philosophical tones. They called it the New Iranian Cinema because they wanted to separate it from the earlier Iranian roots. Some of the directors of the New Iranian Cinema movies are Abbasid Kiaro Stami, Jafar Panahi, Majid Abbasid Kiaro Sami was a screenwriter, a film, a film director, and a film producer. He was involved in more than 40 films. His films include Coker Trilogy, A Tasted Cherry, and The Wind Will Carry Us. Tamine and Milani. She went to jail for making the movie Nimea Penhan because it was said to be anti revolutionary. She makes movies of women discrimination. Her newest movie was Unwanted Women. It was about an extraordinary story. It was an extraordinary story. Extraordinary story. A Sima likes to cover up a journey with a friend under the law, which bans to travel together for unmarried couples. Hedie Tehrani. 
was born on June 16, 1972. She was related to Nasser Takfai, who was a very famous filmmaker. She's an actress and a film director. She began her acting career in the movie Sultan, which was in 1996. In the movie Garamez, she received the Crystal Samora for her.